Hey everyone, welcome to our new video. In this video we will learn how electrons of an atom are arranged around the nucleus in different shells. Next, we will learn how atoms can lose or gain electrons to form ions. And finally, we will learn the concept of valency of atoms. We learned in our previous videos that atoms are made up of three subatomic particles, the protons and neutrons located at the nucleus, and the electrons orbiting around the nucleus. The electrons orbit in definite shells called energy levels. These shells are represented by the letters K, L, M, N, or the numbers N equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. But how are the electrons distributed in different shells? Niels Bohr and Charles Burry proposed that each shell, N, can have a maximum of 2 N squared electrons. So, the first shell or the K shell can have a maximum of 2 times 1 squared or 2 electrons. Similarly, the second shell or the L shell can have a maximum of 8 electrons, the third or the M shell can have a maximum of 18 electrons, and so on. They also proposed that the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated on the outermost shell is 8. Moreover, electrons are filled in a stepwise manner, which means electrons cannot be accommodated in a given shell unless the inner shells are completely filled. We will now learn these rules with some examples. Let's start by drawing the electron configuration of oxygen. The fact that oxygen has an atomic number of 8, it has 8 protons. But also, it has 8 electrons. These electrons will be arranged in shells around the nucleus in a stepwise manner. The first shell to fill is the one closest to the nucleus as it has the lowest energy level. The first shell can accommodate only 2 electrons, so the first 2 electrons will fill the first shell. Next, the second shell can accommodate a maximum of 8 electrons, but only 6 electrons are left. So, all the 6 electrons will go to the second shell. Next, let's take sodium. It has an atomic number of 11, so it has 11 electrons. Like oxygen, the first 2 electrons fill the first shell. Now, 9 more electrons are left. But the second shell can accommodate only 8 electrons. So, the next 8 electrons fill the second shell. There is still one electron left, and it will go to the third shell. Although the third shell can accommodate a maximum of 18 electrons, but for the case of sodium, it's the outermost shell, so it can accommodate only 8 electrons. In order for an atom to be stable, its outermost shell needs to be completely filled with 8 electrons. Since sodium has only one electron in its outermost shell, it's unstable. Similarly, our last example of oxygen has 6 electrons in its outermost shell, so it is also unstable. As such, they will want to react with other atoms so that they have a full outer shell. Now, going back to the electronic configuration of sodium, we see that it has an incomplete outer third shell with one electron, making it unstable. What would help is if the outer electron is somehow removed. This would mean that the outermost shell which is now the second shell would be full with 8 electrons and so the sodium is stable. However, even though the sodium atom still has 11 positive protons, it now has only 10 negative electrons. So, the charge of the 10 electrons and protons will cancel out, and overall, it's going to have a 1 plus positive charge, and so we call it a sodium ion rather than a sodium atom. Similarly, oxygen has 6 electrons in its outer shell, making it unstable. So, it has to either lose 6 electrons, or, gain 2 electrons to become stable. But, it's easier to gain 2 electrons than lose 6 electrons. So, after gaining 2 electrons, even though the oxygen atom still has 8 positive protons, it now has 10 negative electrons. So, the charge of the 8 protons and electrons will cancel out, and overall, it's going to have a 2 minus negative charge, and so we call it an oxygen ion rather than an oxygen atom. So, atoms can become stable by either losing electrons, or by gaining electrons, or by sharing electrons, which we will cover in a separate video. This concept is characterized by the term valency. Valency of an atom is defined by the number of electrons an atom needs to lose, or gain, or share to become stable. From our examples, sodium needs to lose one electron to become stable, so its valency is 1, oxygen needs to gain 2 electrons to become stable, so its valency is 2. Similarly, hydrogen, lithium, and fluorine has a valency of 1, beryllium, magnesium, 
and sulfur has a valency of 2, boron, nitrogen, and aluminum has a valency of 3, and carbon, and silicon has a valency of 4. However, there are some exceptions. The noble gases all have completely filled outer shells as we can see with helium or neon or argon. And because of this they don't want to lose or gain any electrons and so they don't react with any other atom, so they have a valency of zero. In our next video, we will learn how ions of different atoms combine to form compounds. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you find it useful, please do share it with your friends or give us a comment down below, and we will see you next time. Thank you.